Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Cole, day three of our uh, uh, online learning. Um, today, uh, we are going to be talking about another social movement that happened in the 1960s and 70s, and that is uh, the women's rights movement uh, or the feminist movement. Um, now, with that, uh, there will be a uh, document-based homework assignment, some sort of primary source uh, assignment to do um, after this uh, video lecture. So please make sure you check out the lesson plan to get that. Um, today, I will be making fun of six period. So I have to start by reminding Brianna that even though we are not in class, we do not want to wake the neighbors up. Um, so please use your indoor voice um, as throughout the duration of the lesson. So um, with that, Let's do this thing. Women fighting for equality. Here we go. Um, so when I use the word uh, feminism, uh, the, the feminism, the actual definition of feminism is the belief that women should have economic, political, and social equality with men. Um, now that has, um, obviously in, in more recent years, feminism has sometimes taken on some sort of different meaning. Um, but ultimately, at, at, at its core and at the start of the movement, what it means is that, you know, men and women are equal um, and not that women are trying to be better than men, but that they're equal. Um, we know, obviously, for, for most of human history, women were not equal to men. For most of history, women were property of men, either their fathers or their husbands. Um, but by, you know, the 18, 17, 1700s, uh, women had gained some freedom, but basically had uh, very, very few rights. Um, you know, the first rights for women really come in the early 1900s, late 1800s with the, the women's suffrage movement uh, of getting women the right to vote. But now we're in the 1960s. And although um, women have the right to vote and are independent, uh, there is still quite a bit of inequality, especially when it comes um, to workplace, uh, to discrimination, uh, women working for less wages, harder to get uh, leadership jobs in, in companies. Um, are, are just treated uh, as second-class citizens to men. Now, really where the feminist movement actually starts is during the civil rights movement of African Americans uh, because many women are, uh, sit here and go, well, hold on, we're, we're trying to get equality based on race, but yet we don't have equality based on gender. So we need to do both. And so with that, uh, the feminist movement starts in the 1960s. So there I just have a definition of what uh, feminism means. Uh, now, the organization that really pushed uh, the women's rights movement, it was called the National Organization for Women, shortened down to NOW. Uh, NOW was founded in 1966, so right in the middle of the, the civil rights movement, as an organization trying to secure more rights for women. Uh, it originally started as trying to get uh, more access to child care facilities, more access to you know daycares and things like that, to allow mothers to go out and pursue work and education. Um, for the most part, for most of history, uh, once a woman became a mother, their job was to stay at home and, and take care of the kids. Um, but with that, um, now is trying to push for the ability to allow women to be independent, to go to college, to go get a job, uh, and not be stuck at home uh, with, with children. Uh, with this, uh, the now also uh, pressured the government um, to try and um, get gender discrimination laws. Okay, At the time, it was legal to not hire a woman because she was a woman. That you could hire only a man. Um, you could also intentionally not hire a woman because she was pregnant or because she was a mother because then you know that they're going to have to take more days off and things like that. So um, there was quite a bit of discrimination against uh, women. Now, some of the really big uh, successes for the feminist movement, uh, the first one is called Title IX. Um, Title IX is an addition onto the... Um, education bill uh, that kind of runs our federal government uh, education system. Um, and basically what it did was it banned any discrimination based on sex um, in any education program. Um, essentially what they used to have happen um, was things like, um, let's say, AP math classes. Okay, um, It wasn't expected that ladies would be taking, need to take these uh, advanced math classes, so they were only open to men. Or things like, you know, the shop classes or sentinel classes, those would only be open to men because women don't need to learn those. And women would be sent into more of a family uh, consumer science, um, you know, home 
skills class. Okay. Uh, title nine bans that it says that, um, you, you know, any educational program has to be open to men and women, um, that there has to be equal treatment and equal funding for those programs. Um, it also, uh, ensured that students in school do not face, uh, sexual harassment, um, and that schools have a very strict process to follow if that happens. Uh, one of the big things it did was really begin the widespread uh, amount of girls' sports in high schools and colleges. Um, before Title IX, most uh, high school sports were only boys, so there would not have been a girls' basketball team or a girls' uh, soccer team. There would only be a boys' one. Um, so with that, Title IX ensured that there are equal opportunities for boys and girls in all education things, not just classroom stuff, but even extracurriculars. Uh, another big victory for the feminist movement came in 1973 in the ca court case Roe v. Wade. Uh, Roe uh, Ro v. Wade uh, was about uh, a woman's right to choose an abortion, to abort a pregnancy. Um, and with that, uh, Roe, that is not her actual name. She had her name um, you know, she went by a pseudonym, uh, for privacy. Um, she, uh, lived in Texas and Texas had a law banning any abortions. Um, with that, she took the case to the Supreme court. Uh, and in 1973, the Supreme court ruled that women do have the right to choose an abortion up to a certain limit. Um, that under the fourth amendment, uh, to the constitution about the right to privacy, um, uh, that the government cannot tell you what, uh, to do. Uh, in that instance of choosing an abortion. Now, I believe, if I remember correctly, the Supreme Court came out and ruled uh, that up to uh, the second trimester, a woman could abort a pregnancy. After the third trimester, then uh, she could not. So there are a lot of restrictions on Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade is still hotly contested today, and a woman's right to choose an abortion is still a major issue uh, that uh, politicians um, and you know that we have we deal with and, and deciding. Um, you know, what is the right of a woman uh, in terms of aborting a pregnancy? But the Supreme Court has said that it, it is legal to do. Uh, here's the logo for now, National Organization for Women, the big organization fighting for change. Now, the biggest change that now fought for was actually an addition on the Constitution called the Equal Rights Amendment. Um, Congress, all the way back in 1920, had passed an amendment uh, requiring... Uh, equal treatment uh, of law uh, regardless of sex. So nowhere in the Constitution does it say that that women are protected to with you know equality of men, okay? Meaning technically, Congress could pass a law legally discriminating against women and there's no constitutional basis at all to protect women from that happening. So the Equal Rights Amendment has a long time coming where uh, women's rights feminist activists had wanted to get this included in the Constitution. The actual quote that would be added to the Constitution is this. It says, equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged. Abridged means like limited. By the United States or by any state on the account of sex. So that term would be brought into the Constitution as an amendment to ensure that women are treated equally to men. However, uh, as with all constitutional amendments, it would need three-fourths of the states to agree to it, okay? Uh, now, in the 1960s, now got this ERA. It's commonly called the Equal Rights Amendment. It's commonly called the ERA. Um, brought it to the forefront of the National Society again through protest and tried to get the ERA passed. Um, so here... You know, is a parade, a march uh, of activists trying to get the ERA added to the Constitution. Here's a, a, another one. Um, very, very quickly on, over 30-something states very, very quickly uh, approve it and agree to it. And it looks like this is a no-brainer. We're going to add this to the Constitution. Now, Congress in the 1960s had set a 10-year limit that the, the states have 10 years to get three-fourths of the states. I believe three-fourths of the states would mean to be like 38, I think, something like that, um, states that would need to ratify this, okay? Uh, and they gave them 10 years to do it. And within the first couple of years, I mean, it's boom, like no problem, all sorts of states ratifying it. It looks like we're going to add a constitutional amendment uh, that says women are equal to men. Unfortunately, though, as um, the ERA date gets closer and they need only three more states, 
you see a real conservative pushback against the ERA. Um, in the early 1970s, conservatives begin gaining a lot more power in government. We're going to learn about this more a little bit later on, but you have to keep in mind that up to this point, since the 1930s, there had only been one conservative president, and that was um, Dwight D. Eisenhower. So it had gone FDR, Truman, one round of a Republican with Eisenhower, and then right into Kennedy and, and Lyndon B. Johnson. So there's about a 25-something years of pretty much dominated by liberals and all this change, 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 change. Well, in the midst of the Vietnam War, in the midst of all sorts of chaos in the country, in the early 1970s, America turns to more conservative presidents and a more conservative movement um, of trying to kind of prevent all this change. And unfortunately for the feminist activists, uh, the Equal Rights Amendment becomes kind of the target of the new conservative movement that had been happening. Uh, the conservatives that were, were really pushing family values and said that 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 by making this happen, uh, many conservatives, and not just conservative men, but actually a lot of conservative women, argued that in the current setup, without the Equal Rights Amendment, women actually had it better than men. And they said that by passing the Equal Rights Amendment, feminists would only be opening up more problems for women, that that would actually be a step down for women to be equal. Um, and so with this, um, there's all sorts of rallies in the early 70s. The ERA becomes kind of the big controversial issue. Um, to, to show you kind of the backlash against the feminist movement, here was a quote, uh, feminists hate men, marriage, and children, and were oppressed only in their distorted minds. Um, that sounds like something a man would say. That was actually a quote from a woman talking about other women um, and some of the backlash against this. So unfortunately... Um, as the 10-year window that Congress had given comes up, the ERA is going to fall three states short. You can see, uh, here is the map. So you can see the states that did not ratify it. You can tell kind of the parts of the country, right? Especially the southern states tend to be a more conservative, traditional, uh, religious type background. And so as a result, those states uh, did not ratify the amendment. You can see that all the other states did. Now, uh, with that, here's some pictures of some of the anti-ERA stuff, the Stop ERA movement. Um, this is Phyllis Shafley. She's going to be the, the big leader of the Stop ERA movement. Um, and I'm going to kind of hold off on going over a lot of the reasons why, because that's what your assignment is going to be about. Uh, and then we'll talk over that uh, later on. Now, with that, the ERA is still in the news today uh, because three of these states, I believe, uh, Nevada, Virginia, and I think Illinois, I don't remember the third one, uh, have recently, within the last four or five years as part of the Me Too movement, um, have agreed to actually have voted to ratify the amendment. So technically, uh, the amendment has enough um, votes of ratifying it uh, to make it part of the Constitution. The problem is five of these states that were ratified it decided to unratify it, to drop out. So right now, um, it's, it's, there's a big push again to try and put it in the Constitution, uh, but it, it looks like likely um, that the, the 38 votes aren't there anymore, that we, they've gained three, but they've lost five, and so there's still not enough votes to put it in the Constitution. But with that, uh, the ERA uh, kind of representing one of the big pushbacks against all this change that we have been learning about. So thank you guys. I know this video was a little bit longer. Um, hopefully you guys stayed up and, and taking notes with us on that. Um, so please pay attention to less plan because you do have an assignment that goes along with this. Um, and then this is our last section uh, before we're going to have a quiz. So we're going to have a quiz over all these civil rights movements. Um, so pay attention to your less plans. You'll see how to create the quiz uh, and all that stuff. So uh, with that, um, that is it for today. And uh, I hope that uh, everyone is having a really good day and a good little break. Um, so yeah, have a good one. See you guys.